Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy Watchers on this Tuesday, the 5th of January in the year 2016. Wow, we're here already. What's going to happen this year? Well, let me submit to you that it's already happened. Uh, and you've read about it, I'm sure. Watched it on uh, television, the story unfolding uh, about the uh, little tiff between the Saudis and the Iranians. It started Saturday, January Second, as reported by Reuters, Saudi Arabia has executed 47 people for terrorism, including the prominent Shia cleric Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr. Now, Nimr al-Nimr <coughs> was a figurehead uh, in Iran, but he was also a revolutionary bent on unseating the power of the Saudi princes. <coughs> has been operating sub rosa for some time before he was arrested. And Others were detained. Most of those executed last Saturday were involved in a series of ta attacks carried out by Al-Qaeda. Uh, however, the Saudis also detained hundreds of members of the Shiite minority after protests in the 2011 through 2013 period, during which time several Saudi police officers were killed. Let's uh, fast forward to Monday, January 4th, as reported by The Guardian. <clears throat> Saudi Arabia has cut diplomatic relationships with Iran. Cutting diplomatic relations with Iran is very, very serious business, I want to tell you. <clears throat> Why? Look at a map. You have the Saudi Peninsula, you have the Persian Gulf, right across the Persian Gulf you have Iran. Uh, Iran is Shiite, the Saudis are Sunni, and a flame has been ignited after literally uh, hundreds of years <clears throat> of brewing problems between the Shiites and the Sunnis. Now things have come forward to almost a, st a state of war. The Saudi Foreign Minister Ab Adel al-Jubir told a news conference that Iran's diplomatic mi mission pardon me, and related en entities in Saudi Arabia had been given 48 hours to leave. He said Riyadh would not allow uh, the Islamic Republic to undermine the Sunni kingdom's security. And uh, the move on, this was last Sunday, came after two days <clears throat> of outrage among uh, Shiite Muslims across the Middle East, and even as far east as Southeast Asia, uh, upon the death of Nimr al-Nimr. Now because he, had, he was quite a figurehead for the Shiites. Now moving forward <clears throat> to, to uh, January 5th, as reported by Bill Koenig in the Koenig World Watch Daily. Uh, and Bill Koenig writes this, as the Cold War between Iran and Saudi Arabia heats up, the Barack Obama administration is trying to straddle the fence and not take sides. And what else is new? But its actions tell a different story. They all seem to favor Tehran. This is fascinating. Uh, the United States is now coming down on the side of Tehran. And you remember the, the recent negotiations <clears throat> between the United States and the Iranians uh, on the famous nuclear deal that was made but never signed. Now we are moving forward, I think, advancing <clears throat> the spirit of that nuclear deal by coming down on the side of Iran, the Persians. Following the Saudi government's announcement last Saturday that it had executed 47 prisoners, including the popular Shiite cleric that we mentioned before, the United States State Department did two things, according to Bill Koenig. First, it issued a statement expressing concern that Riyadh's actions were exacerbating sectarian tensions. In other words, Cut it out, you Saudi princes. You shouldn't be doing what you're doing. <clears throat> and then Secretary of State John Kerry uh, called Iranian, Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif, encouraging him to try to de-escalate the crisis, trying to play both sides, if you will, which, by the way, has been our policy now for several years. This is what I was coming to, however, and this is what interests me. I mentioned at the outset that there's Bible prophecy here. Because when you come to Ezekiel 38 and the famous verse 13 that speaks of Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and all the young lions uh, thereof, 
that is a fascinating, fascinating political statement. We've said for years that Sheba and Dedan would represent Saudi Arabia, the Saudi princes. It, today's Iran represents Persia. On the other side of the Persian Gulf you have the Shiites of Iran. They are the biblical Persians. <clears throat> the Saudis right across the Persian Gulf are Shiites representing an entirely different group of interests. They are mentioned here in verse 13 of Ezekiel 38 as Sheba and Dedan and they are aligned with the merchants of Tarshish. And I've said for years and, and many uh, other scholars digging through uh, ancient books, ancient histories and uh, uh, study guides of various kinds, linguistic and otherwise, have concluded that Tarshish uh, most likely represents Europea the Europeans, in particular the British, and all of the, the British that moved to America. So you have England and America chiefly represented as the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions, that is all the offspring of the political developments of the last two, three hundred years. <clears throat> and that's one power group. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? In other words, uh, this invasion represented by Ezekiel 38, chronicled by Ezekiel 38, uh, the northern enemy called Gog is aligned with Persia as we all know. Persia is today's Iran. And the protesting group upon the, the occasion of this invasion it just happens to be Saudi Arabia and the Young Lions supporting Saudi Arabia. That would be us, uh, that would be Britain, that would go all the way back to the 1930s with Occidental Petroleum, British Petroleum, all the deals made between the Saudi princes and the Europeans. It's come to this. It has come to the fact that over the weekend ties are cut between Persia, Sheba, and Dedan, to put it in biblical terms. And suddenly we find ourselves and this, by the way, news release from Bill Koenig, and by the way, you can read this on the web at World Watch Daily if you want to examine it minutely. <clears throat> what it says is the United States is now dancing between two power groups that are threatening to make war with each other. This is so biblical it's hard for me to overemphasize the fact. Ezekiel 38 describes exactly this kind of maneuvering prior to the great invasion from the north uh, and Gog of the land of Magog. How many times have we talked about this? Possibly the Russians, certainly the Turks, certainly the Persians, <clears throat> many allies from North Africa, Northeast Africa, all coming together. You know we're seeing this today. But over the weekend we've seen the uh, tension rise to yet another level and I believe to the level of that is just prior to the the outbreak of a, of a major major war. What are we doing? Bill Koenig says we are vacillating between an alliance with the Persians and an alliance with the Saudi princes. How's how's this going to come out? <laughs> Believe me, we'll be watching. And you know that's what I always say. We're watching, so you be watching too. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.